Hello, my dear friends. Another study in our wonderful names of our wonderful Lord. And I just want to read you um, from Psalm 27. Nothing more comforting than the Word of God. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Amen for that. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear now. Wow. I don't think we have an army against us. Um, actually, the way the world is going, it sure seems like that, doesn't it? But we might have a few people against us, a few neighbors against us, a few people. I don't know. But... David says, I have, though I have an army against me, my heart will not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. You know, that's what we should be doing. Can you imagine if our to-do list was whittled down to, I just need to see God today. I just need to be wowed by God today. I just need to be looking to God, looking at his beauty. How we miss. Imagine going through the Louvre in France. And, oh, speaking of France, yeah, the Olympics. God have mercy. Such godlessness abounds. I know these people are lost. But anyway, um, you know, going through the beautiful art museum with your head down, not wanting to see anything. No, you would miss all those beautiful paintings. So how we need to just see every day the beauty of the Lord. You don't want to miss that. Um, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. Wow. He's going to hide you. He's going to protect you. He'll tuck you away. He shall set me on high upon a rock. I love that. The flood's coming around you. Let him set you on a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. And do you love what, what won the battle? What did he do? When there was a battle, Jehoshaphat, he put the praise band before the army because praise won the battle. You know, praise will lift you out of the mundane. Praise will lift you out of depression. Praise to the Lord. You know, thinking about him, his character, his qualities, his goodness, his faithfulness. Just recall who he is. And I'll tell you what, that'll shrink your prayer list. You know, the Jewish people, I've said this before, before they even get into their prayers, recall, recount for fi first 15 minutes all of his attributes. And, and again, you 15 minutes is not even long enough. It, it would just take you so many weeks to just go through his names and what he is and what he does but can you imagine just recalling those first 15 minutes your prayer list would shrink your worry would shrink anyway um he will set you on a rock your enemies all around me he will he will take care of them he will scatter your enemies therefore i will offer sacrifices of joy in his tap don't lose your joy i will sing yes i will sing praises to the lord hear O lord when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. Oh God of my salvation. Um, and I'll stop right there. Actually, oh, I love this verse 10 of Psalm 27. When my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. Is that beautiful? When my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. Love, love, love that. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in the smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, I love that. Are you losing heart today? Don't lose heart. I would have lost heart had um, I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of Elu. You're going to see the goodness of the Lord. He's going to come through. He's never not come through. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I love that. Psalms 27. Okay. 
This is an interesting name for Jesus. He's a nail in a sure place. You know, we always say, oh, they nailed it. Oh, oh she nailed it, or he nailed it. You know, that can be a really good thing. Or just fixedness, when the world is in upheaval. Did you ever think we'd see these things? I mean, look at history. We've been in a bubble in the United States. We really have, because of revival. Because God-fearing people ruled this land at one time. Our value, can you imagine? Our values were based under jail Christian values. Our laws, if people argue, oh, get the, you know, church shouldn't intervene with, with politics. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The church is the salt and the light. We in America came over here to worship God, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ and not to be told what to do. Oh my goodness. Don't get me started. <laughs> but anyway, um, our laws on, on the Bible. Look how messed up we are. The Bible has such wisdom. Oh my goodness. The Bible has such wisdom, such order, such sense, common sense. The world has lost their minds, their ever-loving minds, because they're not reading their Bibles. Wow. But a nail in a sure place, fixed sickness. Again, when the world is falling apart and we feel like earthquakes are happening, you know, you're in a sure, sure place. And that scripture is Isaiah 22, 23. I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. I love that. A nail in a sure place. Whoever else this name may or may not mean, it brings to the worshiping child of God a sense of fixedness, certainty, security of Jesus in his relationship to the temple and the throne of God. In other words, do you feel insecure today? Do you feel shaken up? You know what? Let God give you that security. You're secure. Nothing can move you. You will not be moved. Um, if we on earth are being built together for a dwelling place of God, yet more sure is the fact of the presence of Christ filling the house. Wow, what's filling your house today? Ho hopefully the presence of God. Hopefully the presence of Christ. If we are pillars who go no out no more, it is because he is secure. His place is fastened and sure. Oh, I just want you to know that today. If you feel like something is moving you or you've been moved, you know what? You really are in, a sure, in Christ. You really are in a sure place. Nothing can happen to you what God doesn't allow. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, what a great, what a great thought that is. We are ever going to be with the Lord. Soon he's going to come and get us and rescue us. For where he is, there will his servant be also. And our abiding is as sure as Christ. Oh, I love that. And you know, again, I can't help think of nails and what does it represent. I love the fact I always had a nail right here. One of the grandkids probably took it, a humongous nail that went through his wrist and his feet. You know, and somebody said nails did not hold Jesus on the cross. Love did. He would he would have hung there without the nails. Just remember what he did for you on the cross. Never forget. We don't recall it enough. We really don't the gospel and how much he loved you he went to the cross suffered bled and died the most horrible death so that you could be with him forever and ever so a nail in a sure place you're secure you're fixed okay the next name now let me ask you this if you had to stand before a judge would it be judge judy <laughs> or one of those real i don't know his name i wished i would have looked it up that really kind judge, that older man, I don't think he's judging anymore, but he always asks people their situation in life and how can I help you? And this is what I want you to do. It's like, oh, he's so kind, he cares about people. Would you rather stand before him or Judge Judy? I know what my answer would be. She's tough. <laughs> and sometimes, oh, believe me, sometimes when she'll give it to somebody who's a, just a snarky little brat you're like yes judge judy give it to him but then sometimes you're like wow that was harsh wow that was mean i love that god is the perfect judge anyway uh glorious throne to his father's house he shall be a glorious throne to his father's house we're going to stand before the front throne of god and Thank God it's going to be on his merit, not ours. We would be toast if we stood before God. We couldn't stand before God. Anyway, Isaiah 22, 23. One of the most vivid pictures painted by the Holy Spirit of the life 
that lies beyond follows in the revelation, the swift, wondrous vision of the church on earth. Behold, a throne was set in heaven, and there was a rainbow round about the throne. For heaven's sake, God made the rainbow. He promised he would not judge the earth again with, with a flood. But, you know, read your Bible. He didn't promise that he's not going to judge with fire. Judgment of God is coming. But again, how we need to take back the rainbow was a promise from God. Anyway, the rainbow brings us hope and comfort and the precious, glorious promise that our Lord himself is a glorious throne to his Father's house. Thank God that he already took our punishment. He took our judgment. Okay, we are, we are seen. When he sees us, he sees the righteousness of God. He doesn't see our sin. He's blotted them out. He's covered them. He took our sin. He bore our sin. He paid our debt. Let it no longer uh, hard, be hard or difficult for you to pray. The throne that you bow before is not one of austere judgment or justice like Judge Judy, <laughs> but rather one of infinite grace, infinite compassion. Just picture that judge already weeping. Can you imagine? Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help. Oh, do I love that. And I don't know, Hebrews um, 4, I think it is. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help. I love that. I love when Esther came before uh, Asuerus, you know, and he held out and she could have been killed off with her head. But she came and he put out the golden scepter like, Esther, you're accepted. What can I do for you? I love that. We are accepted in Christ. Um, and don't we love it when our kids come to us? We want to help them. We love them. So you can come boldly, pour out your heart to the Lord. He loves that. Okay, so he's our, he's our fair judge. I love that. He's our throne that we go before. Okay, and the last one, strength to the poor and needy. Strength to the poor and needy. For you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress. Isaiah 25, 4. Isaiah 25, 4. Touched with the feelings of our infirmities, our Lord in his omnipotence, which just means all powerful, becomes a strength to the poor and needy. Are you poor today? I don't care how much money you have, but we are poor spiritually. I mean, you're rich spiritually, but you know what I'm saying. We, God help us. Don't we? Just on Route 9 alone, I'm like, oh, Jesus, I'm poor. I need you, Holy Spirit. Certain situations, oh, Lord, I'm poor. I need help. Um, poor and needy. <laughs> we are so needy. He loves that, though. Let us never forget that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Only when we realize our helplessness and fling ourselves as trusting children into the outstretched arms by which he created the heavens and the earth. I love nature, obviously. <laughs> When I just think, God, can you do anything? Look at a tree, look at a flower, look at a bug. It, infinite amazingness, infinite beauty, infinite awe. Just look at his creation. It's just unbelievable. Um, and they're here today and gone tomorrow. How much more does he love us? But just how silly it would be for you to say to God, and remember, I loathe, I loathe <laughs> that saying, you've got this. You've got this. We got nothing. We got nothing. <laughs> when you tell God, God, I am so... Can you imagine telling God, oh, I got this, God. I got this, God. He'll go, okay. Let's see. You're going to crash and burn. But he always intervenes. He always saves us. I love that. Just when we think that we're... We got this, God. He's like, no, you don't. I, I need to help you. <laughs> you know, um, how silly it would be for that man with the withered hand to stretch forth his good hand how would jesus have healed him no give me your withered hand for heaven's sake don't give me your good hand stretch forth your withered hand tell jesus lord i'm undone i've got bitterness i've got i'm not doing well on this trial i'm i'm flunking in this trial help me lord i'm looking to the circumstances i'm sinking i was walking on the water lord but now i'm sinking Help me lift, lift my head, lift me to the rock that is higher than I. So let God know your weakness. He already knows. You can't fool him. He already knows. You just can't fool him. 
but he created the heavens and the earth. What a wondrous picture does our Lord reveal himself as the supply for some of our needs? No, every need and strength for your situation. How I love that. So you're secure, you're fixed, you're nailed. he's a nail in a sheer place. You go before that compassionate judge to help you, and he's a strength to the poor and needy. I hope that blessed you today, my friend. God bless you.